Many years ago, U.S. Customs detained a Chinese woman and confiscated all her savings, totaling $6,800. The U.S. Customs were pleased with this windfall, but little did they know that they had also let go of the true treasure hidden by the woman. Many years later, the U.S. realized their mistake when the woman they let go became known as the mother of China's semiconductor materials and mother of aerospace materials, shining brightly throughout the world. Her name was Lin Lanying. For her Balud science, she remained unmarried all her life. In today's video, let's talk about Ms. Lin's legendary life. Let's get started. In 1918, Lin Lanying was the first child born into a large and prestigious family, and her sisters became child brides or were killed. Before she was six years old, Lanying was required to wash clothes and cook for the whole family. At age six, she wanted to go to school rather than housework and chatting with other women all day. The only escape was via education. Her mother was deeply influenced by Chinese social gender norms and forbid her to get an education. Lin locked herself in her room and swore that she would not eat unless she was allowed to go to school. Her mother was moved by her insistence, and finally allowed her to attend Liching Primary School. Lin often got the best grades in her class, while she was required to do all the washing and cooking. Then came studying that often kept her up to 12 a.m. She got up to cook and then went to school. Her habit of sleeping six hours continued throughout her life. She fought a similar battle to continue to Liching Middle School. Her mother said that as a female, literacy did not matter. She convinced her mother that if she did not need money to study, she could go. This middle school provided scholarships for students who got the three best grades each semester. Lin earned her scholarship every semester. After finishing middle school, she enrolled in Putian High School. Her mother finally accepted her studies because of her success in middle school. She had exceptional talents hidden within her small body. When she graduated from high school, she was the first female, top scholar, in local area. After graduating from college, she was sent to Dickinson College in the U.S. for further study. It was the first liberal arts college in the United States. She was praised by her professors as the oriental genius for her unique insights in her calculus thesis. Later, she continued her studies at the University of Pennsylvania and in 1955, she became the first Chinese to earn a PhD at the school in its 115-year history, and also the first female PhD. At that time, the Bell Labs in the US developed the world's first semiconductor, a single crystal of germanium, causing a global sensation. The well-known company, Sylvania, discovered the huge potential of semiconductors and searched for talent everywhere. However, even with government guidance, they repeatedly failed to make silicon single crystals. They finally succeeded when they hired Lin Lanying, who used her outstanding scientific analysis and ability to successfully create the first silicon single crystal. The US was overjoyed and even listed her thesis as a patent technology. Sylvania called her a tough Chinese woman and gave her the highest salary among senior engineers. By 1956, with several patents under her name, she had become a well-known scholar in the semiconductor industry. At this time, she received an invitation from her homeland. The U.S. company was anxious and offered her an annual salary of $10,000, while China could only offer her a monthly salary of 207 yuan, about 30 U.S. dollars. At that time, China was facing great difficulties. Mao Zedong and Zhu Enlai wore patched clothes, which looked very shabby to the Americans. However, Lin Lanying regarded the 207 yuan as hope and determination of the Chinese people to develop science and technology. She said, my motherland needs me, and my contribution is worth a fortune. Her resignation letter was held for half a year before the company finally let her go. Her persistence made the Americans very unhappy. A group of investigators searched through her luggage and found $6,800 and two bottles of medicine. They threatened to confiscate the money, which was all the savings she had. Lin Lanying remained calm, but her heart was tense. She tried not to look at the bottles and said in the calmest voice possible, you can take the money, but the medicine is for my mother and she needs it to stay alive. The inspectors seized the money, shook the bottles a few times and returned them to her. What they didn't know was that those bottles contained the future of Chinese semiconductors, 50 grams of germanium single crystal and 150 grams of silicon single crystal. 
it took her more than a year to develop this little thing, which was worth more than $200,000 on the market. If the Americans had found out, she would have had no chance to leave the USA. Fortunately, the temptation of $6,800 brought her the luck to return home. She happily and cautiously held the bottles close to her. They were her priceless gift to her motherland. China highly valued her return and arranged for her to work at the Institute of Applied Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. She donated the two bottles of germanium and silicon to the institute without compensation. However, everyone seemed to be at a loss because they had no experimental equipment or conditions, only a group of passionate scientists. Lin Lanying was not discouraged. She said she would pull out China's first silicon single crystal. But how could she do that without the most crucial protection gas, argon? China couldn't produce it and importing it was banned. However, she came up with the method of vacuum extraction and applied her seed crystal protective cover, which she invented in the United States, to the manufacturing process. In just six months, she pulled out China's first germanium single crystal, and the following year, she researched and developed China's first silicon single crystal. In 1961, she successfully led the design of China's first open-door-style silicon single crystal furnace. In the spring of 1962, she pulled out China's first dislocation-free silicon single crystal. In October of the same year, she developed China's first gallium arsenide single crystal sample. In 1964, China's first gallium arsenide diode laser was born, and the quality of some semiconductor materials reached the world's leading level. Especially in the glorious achievement of China's nuclear shield, Lin Lanying and her semiconductor materials played a crucial role. Some people called her one of the few female heroes among the two bombs, one satellite, scientific heroes. For 10 years, the initial start of China's semiconductor materials was marked by Lin Lanying's completion of one difficult task after another, which brought China closer to the level of the United States and Japan. As a result, she was hailed as the mother of China's semiconductor materials. However, the burden of scientific research in a country was heavy, and Lin Lanying was busy with acute peritonitis. She suffered from pain and fainted several times during work. Premier Zhu personally called the hospital, we must cure her, and there can be no accidents. Through the twists and turns, she lifted up China's semiconductor industry like a baby and helped it grow. However, fate broke her wings. During the Cultural Revolution, she experienced beatings and lost her father forever. When she was humiliated, Americans came to find her, and she answered with three words, I will not leave. Although this sad story is buried in history, the lesson is painful. In 1977, the Chinese suddenly realized that the US and Japan semiconductor industry had left China far behind. The gap was huge, and they were risking their lives to catch up. Lin Lanian used her body, which had been humiliated for 10 years, to fill this tech gap. In 1981, she and all the semiconductor colleagues who had been working hard for this country collaborated to complete the development of a large scale integrated circuit. Five years later, at an international space symposium, German experts were arrogant and disdainful of Chinese technology. Even in the face of a woman like Lin Lanying, they had no basic respect, which forced this 70-year-old woman to swear to produce their own technology. In 1987, she successfully conducted the production of China's first gallium arsenide crystal experiment on a Chinese returnable satellite. The following year, she conducted a silicon-doped gallium arsenide single crystal space growth experiment, which proved the availability of space materials to her international peers, and this was the world's first. The whole world was amazed, and she was hailed as the mother of China's space materials. In 1989, the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration invited Lin Lanying to attend a meeting of high standards, and the German expert who had ridiculed her also came. When they met, he shook her hand warmly. At this moment, their identities were reversed, but she did not show any disdain. She said she had to thank this expert for stimulating her to explode with more determination and strength. Over the past 50 years, China's semiconductor materials have gone from nothing to something, from low level to high level, from backward to advanced. Every progress has been closely related to Lin Lanying. In March 2003, this outstanding woman who fought with a determined will for her entire life passed away. She never married, and all her passion was devoted to China. 
In our eyes, Lin Lanying interpreted a true legendary female power. 